Life Out the Death, my man, um, you produced two songs on that album. I Love the Dope yeah. with Jay-Z and Going Back to Kelly. How did that come about, my man? Well, when he was taping the second, when they was making the second album, I went into the studio and we taped, we tracked two songs, right? He had, Jay-Z was in the studio with him. I remember when I got there that day, um, R. Kelly was finishing up the new Tonight song. He was he was finishing that up. And he was, I remember, he was like, yo, if you don't mind, like, we still working on this, we gotta finish. I was like, nah, nah, I ain't no your business. First time I had ever met R. Kelly. So I stood on the side, I waited, and it took him a while, but he finished it. And then after that, uh, D-Dot from the Hitman, he was the engineer, he tracked the song, and we was tracking the beats for a while, those two beats. And after a while, Biggie came into the studio, and I noticed he had Jay-Z with him. So Jay and Big, they both wrote in their head. They didn't, like, write. So they was walking around the studio, both just like, And they did that for like, I don't know, not even close to an hour. Did that for a while. And then Biggie came over to me and he said, he said, yo, Mo, man, me and Jigga, those was his exact words. He said, me and Jigga, we're going to step out. We'll be back. That was probably like about anywhere from 8 to maybe 9 o'clock. After we tracked the beats, me and D-Dot, we sit in there all night. Because since they left, me and D-Dot was like, yo, let's mix this shit. You know what I mean? We got it sounding right and everything. Got every track sounding right, everything. Ready for them. So when they come back, I sat there and we waited. Then finally it got like around 2 o'clock in the morning, something like that. And I turned to D-Dot and I told him, I said, yo, I'm going to have to bounce. I got like another session. I got somewhere to go in the morning. So I can't stay. He was like, all right, all right. I said, yo, tell Puff that um, when whenever the next session is, you know what I mean, to call me back. I, I definitely want to be here when they mix it. Plus, I wanted to see um, Jay do his track. Um... I didn't even know that later on that big that they would go and get the original Angela Wimbush to sing over the I Love You More and change it to I Love The Dough. I ain't get to witness none of that. When uh, it was time for Big to do them songs, they just booked a session and just did it without me. I ain't get no call or nothing. I heard the, the finished product on the album. I was like, whatever, man long as it came out sounding right. But I didn't like that because I like to be involved with the mix of all of the songs that I produce. You know what I mean? If you produce a song, you should definitely be involved with the mix. The mix down of it. I don't know. Maybe they, they had to rush and just hurry up and get it done. But I, I was. I was waiting on that call. I didn't get that call. Yeah, man, I was just about to ask you about that, too, about how that studio session was like with them going back and forth. I know that had to be a sight to see, man. What I'm trying to tell you is when Big walked over to me and told me, yo, Mo, he said, yo, me and Jigga, we're going to step out. We'll be back. That's the very last time I saw Big. Oh, wow. Yeah, and the next time that I heard about him in the news was when he got killed, when that happened. That studio session, when he said, me and Jigga's going to step out, I'll be back. That's the last time I saw him. How far apart was that from Biggie Doe? Y'all doing I Love the Doe and going back to Kelly. How long after that did Biggie like, pass away? Let me see. I don't know, maybe about a month or so, something like that. Maybe even as much as three, four weeks. I don't know, something like that. But the album was being finished up. It's hard to remember, but I know it was a short time. Probably, I don't know, maybe around a month or something like that or so. And then after that, then that's when I saw what happened when he got killed. 
But that's iconic to me. That's iconic to me, though. That session, when he walked over to me and told me, me and Jigga gonna step out. We'll be right back. That's the last time I saw him. And I remember, um, this is the night before Biggie got killed. I saw it on the news the next day. I'll never forget, I'll never forget um, Junior Mafia, Biggie's crew. Blake C., one of the uh, Junior Mafia. I was in a store right there on the corner of Washington, Washington and Fulton in Bed-Stuy. That strip right there, that's where Biggie, you know, he used to be out there on the avenue. And I stopped in that store right there on the corner that night before I went up in the house but to go get me like some juice or whatever. So I'm in the store, Blake C, he walk up in the store, he, he look up, he see me. He said, yo, Mo, what up, man? He said, yo, yo, I just got back, man. He said, I couldn't stay out there, man. I had to come back. He said, but Joe, they still out there balling, man, having mad fun. I'm in the, you know, in, in, in the freezer getting my juice, looking at them like, they balling, having mad fun. What are you talking about? Like, it's dangerous, man. Like, yo, come home. He's like, nah, nah, it's all good. They having mad fun, everything all good. He said, yo, you heard your song? He said, yo, that joint is banging. He said he called it going back to Cali. I said, yo, what is this dude doing? No, don't call it that. And he said, nah, it's cool, it's cool. He said he ain't. it ain't a diss record or nothing like that. He, matter of fact, he's bigging Cali up. I was like, you sure? He said, yeah, man, it's all good. Man, he ain't put nothing like that on your beat. The song came out, and I got a chance to listen to it. I said, yeah, okay. But I was concerned with that. You know what I mean? Like, I just didn't want Big to fall victim to making, start making, you know, big disc records and all of that, too. You know? And going back to Cali was not that. So I was, like, glad for that. I just didn't want that stuff on my beats. Again, I'm trying to stay apart from that. I ain't want to be involved with none of that. So when I heard going back to Cal, I was like, okay, good, good. He wasn't doing none of that. But I woke up yeah, the man. next day, but I woke up the next day. Remember, I'm in the store, I see Blake C from Junior Mafia, he tell me all of that. I go upstairs, I go to sleep. I wake up the next day and on the TV, on the news, Biggie was killed. just crazy how the sequence of events and how things happen. I just see Blake C in the store the night before. <laughs> I'm a grown man and uh, I ain't afraid to say it. I cried. You know what I mean? I cried both times. I cried for Pac too. Like, because it's just music, man. Don't have to be like that. I, I know a lot of other things happen all in between, but I just wish it would have could have went another way, man. Cause I was right there and I seen when these two dudes was friends. They was friends, man. How you feel about Biggie coming to LA so soon? Do you think that was a good idea? I didn't think it was a good idea. I know if it was up to me, if I had my choice back then, I wouldn't have felt like I had nothing to prove or anything like that. I think I would, I probably would have stayed back home. But you can't be in control of what other people think or what they want to do. What was your reaction when Tupac passed away? I was home and I saw that on TV too. I was like, you know, that whole period to me back then, now it's like it's like all like one big blur to me, man. What I mean is like just so much was going on, man, and just so much confusion and so much confusion, so much stuff going on. After that, I ain't gonna front and mess me up. I couldn't make a beat for about a couple of months, at least about two or three months. I was just kinda like walking around in a blur. 
just trying to understand everything was going on. Messed me up, man. Took a long while after that for me to get back on track. 